and welcome everyone to another episode of Fay Fitness. Today we are going to continue on with our women's self-defense series and we're going to learn how to attack a predator's forearm area. So this will be the area from the fingers all the way up to the elbow. We're not really going to worry about anything above that. That's a little bit too advanced. Um, for this series and the goals that I had for it. But if you do have any questions about how to attack a predator's upper arm and shoulder area, let me know in the comments down below and I'd be more than happy to address that. Um, but otherwise, let's get into the video. <laughs> everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today um, and thank you for bearing with me last week while I was sick. That was quite a bummer, um, especially because I had a real life volunteer um, all lined up to come and be my guinea pig um, for this next part of the series, but alas, they couldn't make it today. So we're going back to Ed and my terrible drawings, so please bear with me. Um, I've given Ed green skin today, just so it shows up of what we're working with and what we're trying to accomplish through this video. So like I said in the intro, we're gonna be talking about the forearm area, and I'm really calling that anywhere between the ends of our fingers and our elbow. And so just for simplicity with this video, we're gonna start with our fingers and work our way up to Ed's elbow because things get easy to difficult or I shouldn't say difficult, but just there's a little bit more thought that has to go into it um, if you're going to attack a predator in that location. So let's go ahead and start with the fingers. They are the easiest to work with. If say Ed was coming at me with his fingers outstretched, all you have to do is grab, bend or grab and twist. Um, unfortunately for all humans, our fingers are quite fragile. And so all you really have to do is grab and just bend that finger back as far as it'll go. Bend it sideways or any which way you want. Um, you could even do a couple at a time. And the, you're not going to break the actual bone. So if you can see on my finger here, we have like the bone, a joint, bone, and then the joint, bone, and then the joint. You're not going to probably break these bones, but you are going to separate the bones at the joint. So that's why we want to twist and pull. We want to tear and disrupt everything within these joint areas, and that's going to cause the damage. Now, keep in mind though with this, if you break someone's finger, they're not going to pass out or be incapacitated, but it's going to hurt like crap and going to give you an opportunity to run away while they're stunned. So if Ed was coming at me, I would grab twist his fingers until I heard some nice cracking and crunching sounds, he's going to be stunned and then I can turn and run away. So that's really what we're going for here. Next, moving up the body, the back of the hand is a great strike point. Again, the bones here are fragile and can easily be broken by, say, a punch, a well-timed elbow, heck, if you can get your knees in there, go for it. Um, but we really want to focus on punching the back of the hand. I don't know if you can really see Ed's hand, so we'll demonstrate on mine. And do you remember when we did the, the knuckle punches? That's with our uh, tips of our knuckles. That's what you want to punch into the back of his hand. And that's going to really hurt. <laughs> so if you want, you can practice it on yourself at like a, a light pressure just to see what that would feel like. But just know that if Ed's coming at me, I can make a nice strategic punch to that area and it's really going to hurt. Again, it's not going to take him out of business, but I can punch him and while he's shocked, I can turn and run away. So if you have any questions about that or about maybe breaking the hand, um, if you have some upper body strength, you can always grab the hand and bend it at weird angles and you may break the hand or uh, sprain the wrist. So that would be a really good way to, again, you're losing the attacker's mobility, so you're if you break a finger, break the hand, sprain the wrist, they're not really going to be able to use that hand, so they're not going to be as effective as a predator or an attacker. Plus, it's going to hurt, so most people when they get hurt, they take that mental step back and kind of a, you know assess the situation in shock, so you can turn and flee. So next, we're moving up Ed's arm. I'm going to skip the wrist just because it requires a little bit of strength and skill, and for most people, if you're panicked and in a hurry, you don't really want to be going through this kind of algebraic equation of 
what do I need to do again to break the wrist? You just want to get in there, do something that's more instinctive, that's going to get the same kind of result, and then get out of there. So the back of the forearm, so if I'm looking at my arm here, we're looking at the top of the forearm in this area right here. So about halfway up the forearm and between that halfway point in the elbow, there's a really nice muscle here that's gonna hurt really bad if you punch it, elbow it, do our little chop hand, our uh, knuckle punch. If you want to get your knee in there again, you know, knee it, that works too. Um, I prefer the knuckle punch just because I like this nice point that my knuckles are able to get to for punching that. And when you punch it, I don't know if you can, if I can get up in the camera enough to see it, but when you punch it, do you see how my fingers flinch? That's because I'm attacking the muscle and the nerves that control my hand movement. So again, you're probably not gonna break the bone, but you're going to momentarily make that person lose their grip and their mobility in that hand. So if they've grabbed you, you punch it, they instinctively have to let go because those muscles instantly contract and um, release, then you can turn and run. So again, not doing a lot of damage, but it's getting you to safety. Last but not least, we're going to move on to the elbow. And this is where we have a lot of variety and a lot of functionality, but maybe this is more advanced. So please let me know in the comments down below if you thought that maybe this next section, session, if maybe this next section is a little bit outside the scope of what we were going for in this women's self-defense series, because I really wanna tailor this to what works best for you all. But with the elbow, if you wanted to hit a pressure point, what you would do is if this is the top of Ed's hand, so his fingernails are up, this is that lump uh, in the muscles and nerves we were talking about earlier, this would be his elbow. So I wanna put my thumb on the top of his elbow and I wanna put my fingers on the back of his elbow. So if I was doing this to myself, let's see, I wore the wrong shirt for this. I've got my hand on the, my thumb on the top, my fingers on the bottom, and I wanna squeeze. And again, if I can squeeze enough, I'm squeezing, the, again, the same muscle and nerves on the top of my hand. So I'm forcing it, can you see if I, let's see, if I push enough how my hand kind of raises. And then I wanna dig my fingers, preferably nails too, in the bottom of the elbow joint and that's going to really hurt all of this nice sensitive skin and the nerves on the bottom too and so by activating that pressure point it's going to hurt like if i sat here and did this to myself enough like it's going to ache and just be really unhappy with me for the next little while again ed grabs me i grab him there the muscles instantly release and i can run away the other great thing you can do with the elbow joint is break it because elbows, like fingers, are very tender. So, what you can do is, say Ed comes up behind me. We're gonna have to get creative here. So I'm gonna imagine that this arm is Ed's arm. What I'm gonna do with my left hand is grab the wrist or the hand, you know, wherever I can get some purchase of some, some skin and some real estate here. I wanna step back so that the top of, or pardon me, so that this um, upper arm is actually sitting on my shoulder. And then you can do several things. You can ram your right hand up, depending on if it's, let's see, if Ed's coming at me and this is his left arm, I can ram my right hand up while I'm pulling down with my left hand. So I can, sorry, this is why I really wanted a volunteer. And that will break and snap the joint or depending on say I'm standing a little off to the side of Ed and he grabs me with this arm, I can again grab it with my left arm and shove straight ahead with my right arm. So I'm essentially pushing the joint the opposite way. Um, I'm taking this nice joint we have here and forcing it into a way it's not supposed to bend, thereby breaking it. So any type of motion like that, and I know that might sound really scary of if Ed's behind me and he's come up and grabbed me for me to step back into him, but realistically, for the most part, the average predator isn't going to be prepared mentally for that type of situation. So they're not going, it's, they're not gonna hurt you further. 
So they're going to be stunned and if you practice this a lot, you can get really good at breaking that um, elbow joint and then of course running off to safety. So um, again, if Ed was off to the side and grabbed me, I could grab his wrist with my left arm. I'm right handed so that's why I'm doing it this way. And then if his arm is up, I can again shove it straight up at the elbow, breaking it, or shove it this way. You could also use your forearm, but I don't have a lot of cushiony muscle or fat there, so I'd prefer to use my hand. But if you're in that situation, grab with your hand and then thrust your arm forward or thrust the arm up if his arm is out like this, again, to break it. Um, I know it's kind of complicated without an actual live person to demonstrate on. So if you have questions, leave them down below. Um, maybe I can find some footage somewhere of like someone else doing something similar. Um, but thank you so much. I really appreciate you all watching today and tune in next week when we get to the fun stuff and get to the actual groin kicks and punches and all that jazz. Um, alas, <laughs> no one has volunteered for that video. Um, but I'll still keep trying, and if I can't find a human volunteer, Ed will be more than happy to step in and play that role for us again. So thank you so much, guys, and I will see you next week.